Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster, and I thought I'd do a quick video today um, about this, uh, which is one of my old little bushcraft um, sort of kits, if you like. It's the sort of thing that I used to use quite regularly um, if I was going out just for an afternoon. I just want to go out and practice a little bit of bushcraft, nothing in particular, uh, and it just contains a few items that um, personally I, f I find are sort of quintessential to bushcraft. It's the sort of thing that I like doing if I'm just going out for, for an afternoon. Um, now this is a Maxpedition um, sort of belt pack, I think it might be the Janus pack possibly, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, and really the video is not about the pouch or what's inside it necessarily, though I will run through the contents. Um, it's more just to sort of give you an idea, of maybe something to think about in terms of what you might want to take out with you if you're just going out for an afternoon or just going out for a day and you want to practice a few of your bushcraft skills. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring the camera a little bit closer in um, and I will show you what I've got in here and give you my thoughts on, uh, on, on what I've got, why I've got it and what you might want to think about yourself. Right then guys, uh, unfortunately the planes are out in force today so I hope the, uh, the audio is not too bad. Um, so this is basically, this is the pouch and as I say you don't need one of these, um, you don't need anything at all, you can stick most of the stuff that I've got in here basically straight in your pockets. Um, I just found this was a nice useful way of uh, keeping everything together. Um, but if I start with the main compartment, so in here I've got probably about 15 feet worth of paracord. Um, the reason I take it is not for sort of setting up tarps or anything like that, though you certainly could use it for that. Um, <clears throat> every now and again when I go out, I just like to sort of try out a few things, whether it's making something to hang a pot from, whether it's sort of trying to build a tripod just to get it, uh, you know, just to practice building a tripod necessarily rather than using one. Um, but I find cordage is always really useful. There's, there's, there's a, you know, a million and one things you can use it for. Um, and personally, I just think it's a really, really useful um, bit of kit to keep in your pack. Moving on from there, um, I've got a lighter, just a small, cheap, disposable. Um, now, this is more, if I want to practice, um, not so much fire lighting, because you can pretty much guarantee to get a fire going with a lighter, but if I want to try a, a different start type and style of fire, I don't want to mess around with traditional lighting techniques, it just allows me to start a fire quickly, and then maybe I can practice feeding in the, uh, the wood from a certain way, or I can build the fire lay and just get it lit very, very quickly, but I always find a lighter just really useful to have in your pack. Um, likewise, I've got my fire still, um, never leave home without it if I'm going out bushcrafting. Um, there's certainly, for me personally, there's something very, very satisfying about lighting a fire with a fire still. Um, I think for many people, once you get the technique down, um, you know, it, it's not particularly difficult to light a fire with a fire still, but uh, if I take today's conditions, for example, it's really, really wet and rainy out. Um, and sometimes if, if I'm in the mood to go out in this kind of weather, I'll take a fire still and I'll try and get a fire going either with materials I've taken with me, which is a little bit of a cheat because uh, obviously if you've got dry materials, it, it should be fairly easy. Um, or I might go around and look for, um, you know, uh, dead standing and things like that, sort of break out into the center where it should be dry and then try and get a fire going that way. But again, practicing with a fire steel, in my opinion, is never wasted time. Um, even if you don't get a fire going, um, you may get an idea of kind of what you're doing wrong and you may have a better idea for next time you come to use it. Um, okay, so I've got, as you've seen in a few of my other videos, tampon. Um, it's in its own little sealed plastic container and it's basically a guaranteed dry tinder source. So provided you've done your prep, you can get a good flame going with this, hopefully long enough uh, to get your, um, your kindling to catch. Now, I've got a small torch and a battery. Um, always carry a torch around with me. Um, if I'm out bushcrafting, there are some areas I go that have got sort of natural um, sort of cave formations and things like that. Not very many of them, and none of them are particularly deep. Um, but it's always useful, I find, just to have a way of sort of you know, e even if you find sort of like a rabbit warren or something like that, and you want to look inside, you know, at least you can give you shine your torch down there, and you can see what's going on. Likewise, when you sort of find um, you know the bowls of trees that have got sort of um, Little, little mini caves and things under the roots um, or you know holes in a tree and you want to see what's in there. Always just a really useful thing I find to carry around. Um, and then the main piece of kit, uh, which goes for any time I go bushcrafting, I always have some sort of knife with me. Um, this is my Enzo PK70. It's not one I use very often, which is why it lives in here. 
Um, but again, it's a really, really nice little um, little knife. It's got a Scandinavian grind on there. I did do a video about this recently. Um, and it just keeps a very, very good edge. And it's just a useful little knife um, that allows me to do most bushcraft tasks, um, apart from sort of heavy cutting or chopping and battening, that kind of thing. Um, so that's what I keep in the main compartment. And those items there will allow me to go out and spend a good day just practicing bushcraft, just just doing a little bit of everything, a little bit of fire lighting, you know, a little bit of carving, um, playing around with some cordage, and uh, either practicing some knots, which I, I highly recommend if, if if you don't know your knots, um, you know, you've got quick release knots, you've got um, knots that you can put tension on when you're trying to string up a tarp, and just with a very small amount of cordage like that, you you can go through those and just sort of, you know, if you're not haven't got any particular plans while you go out, which often I do, I'll just go out for a walk in the afternoon. I'll take this with me and I can sit down somewhere, either have a brew or whatever, um, and just play around doing some knots or a little bit of fire lighting or what have you. Um, now, inside the zippy bit at the front, again, I've just got a couple of bits. Uh, in fact, just one thing in there. Um, I've just got some birch bark. Um, now, again, similar with the fire steel, for me, lighting a fire with uh, birch bark, um, although it's not particularly difficult, I do find it very rewarding, um, so I always keep a bit with me. I'd rather um, harvest it while I'm out, but I just keep a little bit in there in a nice dry Ziploc bag, just so I've got some in case I, uh, I, I can't find anything while I'm out. Um, and then finally, a little compartment at the front, and I've got some char cloth. Um, really fun stuff to play with, um, especially if you're looking at different types of materials for tinder bundles. Um, I find it really, really nice. Um, you know, you get a good ember going with a spark from a fire still or the next item I'm going to show you. Um, and then it's just playing around with what tin, natural tinders you have available. Um, you know, you can use dry grasses, you can use dry moss, um, you can, um, you know, many, many different things you can use. And I find it quite nice to go to an area where I know I'm going to camp at some point in the future, look at what natural resources are around, um, and then use the char cloth to get a spark and then try and get a little bit. Of, yeah, even if I'm just getting a flame, you know, sometimes I, I, I won't even bother getting a real fire going. I'll just take it from char cloth to tinder bundle to flame then I know that if I can get that flame, I know I can make a fire. Um, and that's for me is one of the, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the great sort of um, things about practicing bushcraft is you don't have to go and go the whole hog every time. You haven't got to start a fire. You don't have to cook. You haven't even got to brew a cup of coffee. Um, if you can just get yourself to that point where you can regularly make a flame, you know that you can make a fire by that method. And, and because I tend to travel in uh, certain areas quite regularly, I know what natural resources are available to me there. Um, and then the last thing that I carry in here, and I think a lot of people don't give this, uh, this kit enough credit, and I, I highly recommend anybody um, getting hold of one of these um, and giving it a try. And it says it's a, a, a flint and steel kit. Um, now I was very lucky enough um, to get hold of this particular steel striker. Um, it was part of a trade on a, a web forum that I'm online. I was getting rid of a few bits of kit. Someone had, um, and this actually came in a really nice leather pouch with a few other bits with it, which I've transferred into here. Um, but this particular fire steel I really like. It's very nice. It's really comfortable, very ergonomic, really nicely made. Um, now I've got. Um, stills that I use um, that are made out of bits of old file and random bits of steel um, but there is something really nice about um, a steel striker like this and you know done in sort of the traditional style um, and then just a lump of flint now I'm quite lucky again where I tend to practice bushcraft certainly in two or three of the locations I go to regularly um, there is natural flint around all over the place so I don't need to carry this um, I tend to because it doesn't take up a lot of weight or space um, but again you know you kind of hold it like this so you, you basically the the benefit of a striker like this is you you hold it like so so you're protecting your knuckles from the flint um, and you're basically, if I find a good edge on here, see if I can get a spark on camera. So you can see the amount of sparks hopefully coming off of this. Um, and again, you know, you get that in conjunction with a little bit of char cloth, even with a piece of birch bark I found on occasion, you can get a fire going quite easily with this. Um, but yeah, that's, that's essentially what I carry here, guys. And as I say, the reason I carry this, this little selection is these are the things, for me, that I enjoy doing when I go bushcrafting. I like trying to start fires with, with different methods, you know. Um, as much as I'm, without sounding too big-headed, I think I'm fairly accomplished using a, a fire still. Um, that said, I still enjoy it. I still get an enormous sense of satisfaction whenever I make a fire using a fire still. 
Um, likewise, not so much accomplished with the flint and steel, um, though I have made some improvements in that over the last year. Um, and again, in conjunction with sort of these kind of materials, um, if there's nothing available to me where I am or nothing that I'm able to get hold of, um, or maybe the weather conditions aren't right, I can still practice using these, um, though I do prefer to obviously picking up materials um, you know, when I'm out and about. Um, and again, the knife will certainly allow you to do that um, a lot easier. For example, I mean, this birch bark I've had for some time, um, harvested it, brought it home, let it dry out, and I've sealed it in here. Um, trying to harvest birch bark without a knife, it's certainly doable, um, but it is a lot easier to do it with a knife. And again, once you've got your knife, you can then rough it up, you can scrape it back so you've got a nice little um, sort of dust pile um, to take a spark much more readily. Right then guys, well I hope that was useful. As I say, it's just my take on uh, a few sort of simple basic items you can take out for sort of a day's or, or an afternoon's bushcrafting, which is something I do very regularly. Um, and really the point to make was that, you know, this is really minimal kit and none of this was particularly expensive. Um, this is sort of stuff you can pick up quite easily, cheaply and readily. Um, in terms of, sort of things like the, uh, the birch bark and stuff, you know, stuff that you can pick up for free. Um, things like the lighter and the torches, you know, sort of stuff that you may just have lying around already. Um, but that's that's my take on it. You know, I quite enjoy just going out. If I'm not going out for a, uh, you know, a, a night out or a weekend or longer, um, you know, I still enjoy being outdoors, as I said on my other videos. And I quite like the fact that I can just go out with a really small amount of kit. Um, doesn't matter if it's in a pouch like this. You can throw it in your pockets, throw it in your jacket, stick it in your rucksack, whatever. Um, but it's just, I just find it's really nice to be able to go outside, um, practice some of the skills that I've, I've learned or I'm still learning in most cases. Um, and you don't need to spend a lot of money or need a lot of kit just to get out there. Um, so if you're like me and you're sort of you know fairly, um, you know, I've been doing bushcraft for a fairly long time, yeah, that's great, you're gonna have all this kit. But if you're just getting into it or you're looking to start sort of seeing what bushcraft is all about, you know, this sort of stuff here, I mean, you can pick up a torch like this if you don't already have one for a couple of pounds. Um, lighter you can get anywhere. Decent knife, um, I'm thinking things like maybe a, a Victorian Oxford Swiss Army knife, that kind of thing, you can pick up for probably 10 or 15 pounds. Um, this particular fire steel, which is one of my favorites, uh, made by a company called Schrade, um, I think this cost me about 5.99. Um, you can buy them cheaper than that. Um, and again, things like the, um, the uh, fire uh, steel striker, you know, you, you can pick up something like this for probably about 15, 20, 25 pounds. You get a nice little kit, that kind of thing. Um, alternatively, you can find a little bit of scrap steel somewhere if you've got an old broken knife where you can file off the edge. Um, e even an old file, um, you know, if you can kind of use another file to, to file off the teeth, so to speak, to flatten it down a bit, you know, you can essentially get this kind of thing for free. The flint you can pick up, depending on the area where you live, you can pick up most places. Um, and again, it's all just really, really nice, simple, but effective stuff that you can go out, you can lose yourself for an afternoon in the woods, practicing some light, fire lighting techniques, playing around with some knots with your cordage. Um, you know, you can do a little bit of whittling or carving with your knife, um, especially if you're new to it. You know, things like knife work, I love nothing more than sitting out on a fallen log, you know, just whittling away, carving some tent pegs, carving a couple of pot hangers, um, and I still do that to this day. You know, if, if you're new to it, you know, you can have a look online, you can, you can find a few simple things that you can make with just a knife and a, and a, and a piece of stick that you, you found on the ground, um, just to sort of get your techniques and your safe knife work done. Uh, but anyway, guys, I've rambled on for long enough, so I hope it was useful. Um, hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Comments and questions in the box below, and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks, guys.